<laughs> Hello, how's it going? Hello. We're just gonna wait for everybody to join. Hello. Hi. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. All right, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hello. Hello. Yes, okay. Hello. Looks like we have a full class now. Awesome. All right, guys. My name is Joe, and today we're going to be talking about phrasal verbs. So first, we're just going to start off by having everybody introduce themselves and say what country you're from. So we'll start from the left with Ali. Hello. Hello. Where are you from, Ali? Hello. I am from Egypt. From Egypt. And you? Awesome. I'm from the United States, by the way. My name is Joe, and I'm from Arizona. All right, Bell. Can you hear us? Okay, sounds like Bell cannot hear us. So we'll move on. G Giovanni. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Is this is. Uh, the second time that I talk with you. With me personally? Yes. Uh, you teach me English on verbaling privilege. Like uh, oh, yes, 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 yes. That is correct. Okay. Yes. And where are you from? I forgot. I'm from Brazil. Brazil. Oh, okay, yes, now I remember. All right, welcome. Glad you're here. Um, next we have Hakan. Hi. Hello, where are you from? I'm from Turkey. From Turkey. Awesome. Welcome. Thank you. And then Elias. Yes. Where are you from? I'm from Turkey. Turkey as well. Awesome. Okay, and then Julian. Hello. Where are you from? Hello, I'm from Spain. From Spain. Awesome. Okay. Um, Merv or Mervi? Merve. 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 Uh, from Turkey. From Turkey. Awesome. Uh, uh, Mohammed. Yes. Where are you from? From Egypt. From Egypt. Okay, two people from Egypt. Cool. And then last we have Salem. Salim. Salim. I'm from Palestine. From where? From where? Palestine. Can you write it? It's a little hard to hear you. It sound yes, Julian. The sound is pretty bad. It sounds like Salim. It sounds like your microphone is having some issues. Can you hear us? Okay. It sounds like he cannot hear me. Can everybody else hear me? Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Perfect. Then we will move on. So today we're going to talk about phrasal verbs. But since all of you have different levels of English, I'm guessing, there's no way I can figure out which phrasal verbs you guys need help with. So what I did was I found a list of phrasal verbs online, and I'm going to post it in the chat. Um, actually, no, better I'll pull it up and I'll share the, share my screen with everybody. And then we'll, we'll slowly move down the list. And if you see a phrasal verb that you don't understand, then I'll explain it, I'll give some examples, and then we'll make sure that you do understand it. Does that sound like a good idea to everybody? 
Good. All right. Okay. So, I'll pull up this list. Um, okay, phrasal verbs. So, a phrasal verb can be a verb plus an adverb, or it can be a verb plus a preposition. It sounds like somebody has their vo I'm going to mute some people because... Okay, there we go. Okay, here we go. So, um, I'm just going to move down this slowly. And if you guys see a phrasal verb that you don't understand or you have a question about, tell me to stop and I will explain it. Any of these look confusing to you guys? Or do you think you understand most? Maybe a little bit bigger because we can't see it. Oh, you can't? Okay. Is that better? Yeah. Let's see. If Good. There we go. Okay. So everybody can see them okay? Okay. So these are just most of the common phrasal verbs. Um, break in, break into something, break something in. Do any of these look confusing to you guys? Break into. Break into. Okay. So what that means is you're going to you, you use it as in I'm going to break into your house. So if I'm a robber and I want to steal your TV, then I'm going to break into your house. So instead of maybe um, like stealing your key and opening the door nicely, I'm going to break into it as in maybe break a window and break into your house. So maybe to remember that, you could think of a robber breaking into a window. So you could just picture in your mind a robber smashing a window in a house to get in and steal a TV. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And so the way for the best way for you guys to remember these phrasal verbs is to memorize them by associating them with an image. So like that one break into just to remember a robber in a dark black suit um, with a mask on breaking a window a glass window and then jumping inside of your house and stealing your TV so that way whenever you think of break into you'll think of that robber breaking the window and then you'll remember oh it means to enter forcibly okay Moving on. Are there any other questions about these phrasal verbs? No. Break in, break up is usual, used a lot with relationships. Um, bring someone down, that's just to make them sad. Sir? Yes. A break up is to, what's the meaning of? Break up, so if you're dating somebody, so if you have a girlfriend and you're, you, you and your girlfriend decide that your relationship isn't working out and you decide that maybe you guys should date other people, then what you're going to do to end your relationship is called breaking up. So the way you might use it would be, like, say your girlfriend's name is... Katie, then you say, "Hey, Katie, I think I need we. I think we need to break up. So that just means we need to end our relationship. So then somebody might say, "Oh, hey, did you just break up with your girlfriend? Yeah, I did. So that's that's how you use that. You just end the relationship. Think of it like if you and your um you and your girlfriend or boyfriend are a let's see." Um, 
let's say you guys are magnets. So you guys are together. Um, so you guys attract each other. But then when you break up, you break those magnets apart, and that's ending your relationship. Yes. Does that make sense? Okay. Go. On. Okay. Um, bring someone down. Bring some call around. Um, call someone back. If you guys have any questions, just shout them out. Calm, calm down is used a lot. Um, catch up. Catch up can be used. Does anybody know what catch up is used for? So let's see, Daniel. Do you know what the phrasal verb catch up means? Right here. Uh, I don't know. Okay, so it what could it, be said fall off. It could be said what? Fall off. Fall off. Yeah. No, it it means so if so, if you are walking with a friend and you need to stop to tie your shoe, but your friend keeps walking. Then after you're done tying your shoe, you need to catch up, as in reach him again, or or get to the same place as him. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah I got it. Okay. Um, for for example, when you have a lot of work and mm -hmm. you don't, you can do it. Um, mm -hmm. other day you have to do it all the the work. Yep, exactly. That's a perfect example. That's when you have to catch up on your work. Good job. Okay. Um, check in. Does everybody know what check in means? Register? Yes. Perfect. Um, okay. Check out is used very, very often. Um, okay. Um, let's see. Gamzi, is that how you pronounce your name? Gamze. Gamze. Do you know what checkout means? The phrasal verb. Yeah, it means like looking at something. Check it out, we say. Okay, so you understand what that means. So how would you use it in an example? I would say, I have some worksheets here. Check them out. Perfect. Does everybody understand that? Yes. Good. Okay. Come apart, come down with, come forward, um, cut back on, cut something down, cut in. Most of these are pretty easy, so we'll move on to some more difficult ones. So these phrases, so I'm going to zoom in. Okay. So, if you guys have any questions about these, please ask. Yes. Uh, can I ask about uh, some uh, phrase over? Uh, yes. Looking forward. Yes. What is it? Uh, looking forward. Looking forward. Looking for forward. 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 Yes, forward. Looking forward. Yes. Okay, so the way you're going to use that, I'm going to write that on the board for everybody to see. Looking forward. So if you're talking to somebody, maybe maybe you're talking to them um, at a cafe, and you and your friend plan to hang out, um, maybe in the future, like in the near future, in a few days. And so you're ending the conversation, and at the end you say, yeah, I look for, I'm looking forward to hanging out with you on Friday. Then that's how you would use that. So what it means is you're excited for the future. You're looking forward to doing something. You're um, happy about the future. Does that, does that make sense? I know one other meaning. It's that means to want something, to see. To see. Let's say wait some something to happen. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you're 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 
your demand. Yeah, like like you want to see something in the future. So so basically, this is where you are. So you're right here. If this is a line, if this line represents time, <coughs> and you're right here, which is the present, like like right now, and you have something going on in the future, like let's say I'm teaching a class tomorrow. So let's just put class. So um, I might say I'm looking forward to teaching my class on Friday. So what that means is, or sorry, tomorrow. So what that means is I'm happy. I'm I'm excited for it. I'm enthusiastic. I'm, enthusiastic. Yes, I'm 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 <laughs> animatic. I'm <clears throat> happy. I'm excited to 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 teach Boys. that class tomorrow. Does that make sense? Was that Giovanni that asked? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions about just specific phrasal verbs? Okay. And we will go back to the list. I also have, I forgot, I wrote down five of the most common phrasal verbs. Um, I'm going to pull those up real quick. Um, what is the hardest part about learning phrasal verbs for you guys? Remember it. Memor memorizing it. Okay, memorizing it, remembering it. Okay. Um, so here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have seven examples. Um, <clears throat> I'll go through each one because they're some of the most common and I'll write them on the board and then I'll teach you some ways to remember them. So the first example we have was look forward to, which we just did, and the second one is get along with. Does anybody, can anybody tell me what um, the phrasal verb get along with means? Or how it's used in a sentence? Really means stay with. Means what? Stay with. Uh, stay with somebody? Yes, yes, kind of. It means. <coughs> so get along with means you. Yes. For example, improve your. What was that? It's like you have a good relationship, right? Yeah, exactly. The perfect example. So, uh, or I mean, perfect, perfect definition. So you have a. To have a good relationship with somebody. So the best way to remember these is to remember them with an example. That's that's how I try to remember foreign words when I'm learning a foreign language. So to have a good relationship with someone. So it usually like a, a good example of this would probably be <clears throat> I get along with with my flatmate with my what was that floor mate flatmate flatmate what's what's a flatmate flatmate yes like this but you stay in the same flat flatmate like that flatmate flat Oh, flatmate. F L A T. Okay, okay. Flatmate. Yes, that's perfect. So, I get along with my flatmate. Okay. So, what that means is you live in a flat with another person, and you and that person don't have any arguments. Maybe you enjoy each other's company. You have a good relationship. So you get. A, so the most common way to say that would be, I get along with. My flat. I forgot my. But I get along with my flatmate. So that's just one example. But we probably should use a more descriptive example to help us remember it better. So does anybody else have a, another example? Yeah, I, I have one. Uh, okay. Joe is a good guy. He is easy to get along with. Perfect. Joe. Is a good guy. 
Um, he mm-hmm. is an easy, easy to get along. With. Easy guy to get along with. So to help us, this is a good sentence, good example of how it, you would use this phrasal verb. But the best way to help us memorize it is to draw a picture. So I'm going to draw Joe. So let's see. Um, I'm not the best at drawing, but if I draw a picture, <coughs> so hmm, let's give Joe some eyes, a mouth. Um, what does Joe like to do? We need to, we need to just we need to describe Joe and draw him with maybe I don't know what what do you think he likes to do? Does he like to read? Play sports? Should we draw him with a basketball? Any ideas, guys? Let's give him... Let's say he likes to play basketball. So we'll give him a basketball. So Joe's, Joe's got a basketball. We'll give Joe a hat. Let's see if I can draw this. So there, Joe's got a hat. So then let's draw you, because Joe is a good guy to get a good guy. He's easy, an easy guy to get along with. Hold on, somebody is picking up a lot of noise. There we go. Okay, so we have Joe here. We know that Joe is a good guy. He's an easy guy to get along with. We know he likes to play basketball. We know he likes hats. He's got a hat on. So. That's going to help us better remember this phrasal verb because anytime you think of get along with, you're going to think of Joe and then you're going to think of you. So we're just going to draw another person and this will be you. So you guys get along. You, right here, get along with Joe. Well, so anytime you think of get along with, you're going to think of you getting along with Joe well. Okay. So that's just an easy way to remember phrasal verbs. So whenever you're learning them, try and pull out a piece of paper, try and draw a picture, and the more descriptive you make it, the better. So I know this one was kind of a bad example, but if you draw a picture and you make it very descriptive or you make it have a lot of details <laughs> then you're going to remember that phrasal verb better. Does anybody have any questions before I move on to the next example? Does anybody have any um, specific phrasal verbs they'd like to see me explain? No? Alright, then we'll move on to the next one which is put up with. Wah. Does anybody can anybody explain this phrasal verb to me? Or what it means? Or use an example. Put up with. How about, um, let's see, Hamid, can you explain this phrasal verb to us? Can you hear us, Hamid? Okay, sounds like he cannot hear us. How about Julian? Can you explain this phrasal verb to us, please? Um, sorry, I, I don't know. I, I don't know the phrasal verb. You don't know it. Okay, let's see if anybody else does. Does anybody, Michael, do you know this phrasal verb? Uh, that me beer? Uh, actually, no. actually, I have no idea. Okay. About uh, what's the meaning of put up with. Put up yeah. with. So. Does that it mean uh, handle, with, handle with something? Means what? Handle with something. Yeah, it's it's like you you handle something exactly. You you so put up with means you're able to deal with something. You're able to handle it. You're able to tolerate it. So that's probably the best 
best definition. It just means to tolerate something. Something or someone. Um, or someone. So, does everybody know what the word tolerate means? Yes, yes, tolerate any. Okay. Vision. Okay, good. So, putting up with something, when you put up with something, it just means you tolerate it or you tolerate someone. So, a, um, a sentence might be, um, let's see, um, my mom, my mom puts up with um, a lot of um, problems. A lot of problems. Good. Yeah. Puts up with a lot of problems. So what that means is I guess tolerate maybe wasn't the best definition, but my mom puts up with a lot of problems. So what that means is a better a better definition actually is to deal with because it's not you're not t tolerate is saying that it's kind of it's kind of saying that it's okay, but dealing with is kind of like something is there and you have to do something with it. You have to associate yourself. You're associated with it, so you have to do something. So if you deal with something, so my mom puts up with a lot of problems. So what that means is um, maybe the mom is part of a family, and in the family, the uh, let's say one of the kids is a teenager, and he smokes cigarettes a lot, and that's a problem for the family. So <clears throat> you might say, my mom puts up with my brother, who smokes cigarettes all the time. So that might be just one example of how she deals with it. She just she puts up with it. So she could punish him <clears throat> or she she could punish him and he might run away, but instead she just kind of ignores it. It says it's okay a little bit and so that way she's putting up with it. So she's just she's just dealing with it basically. So maybe to rem does that example make sense to everybody? Is anybody is anybody confused by that example? Does anybody want another example? Okay. So <clears throat> then, so the cigarette thing, the the brother with the mom and the family. So the best way to to memorize this phrasal verb is to um, we'll draw some more people. Even though I'm not the best at drawing people, but we'll draw mom. So this is her hair. So we didn't put a smile on her face because she's dealing with this. This isn't something when when you put up with something, you're not really happy about it. It's more like it's kind of like one of those slanty faces. I don't know if you guys ever use those, but it's kind of like the the colon and then the backslash, that kind of like, eh, I'm putting up with this. So we've got the mom and then over here, we've got the um, one of her sons who um, is smoking a cigarette. So hopefully, can you guys kind of see that? This is him smoking a cigarette. So whenever you think of put up with, you can think of the mom putting up with the sun smoking. So I'm just using examples. So the best way, basically the formula for memorizing phrasal verbs is to, let me turn the computer a little. Okay, there we go. So the formula for, for memorizing phrasal verbs. I'm just going to go over the formula real quick so you guys understand how this works, like the best way. So the first thing you're going to do is 
um, learn like or or um, read and understand uh, the definition. So the first thing you need to do is look up the phrasal verb. And I'm sure you can find a phrasal verb dictionary online, or you could probably just find a regular English dictionary. Um, then you can read and, un and try to understand as best as you can the definition. And so the best way to understand it is going to be looking at an example. So that's the second step. Um, you're going to find an example. So you're going to find an example that you understand. So like for example, when, when I said, the, um, my mom puts up with my brother who smokes cigarettes all the time. So that's an example that you guys said that you understood. So since you understand that example, then you can go on to the next step, which is to draw a picture. So when you draw a picture, you're associating a word or, or a phrase, a phrasal verb with an image and so then your mind is going to remember that better because whenever you see this in written text or you hear it you're going to think oh mom smoke putting up with son smoking so that's the best way to memorizing phrasal verbs or any other words in general if you have um, ad if you have trouble with nouns or adjectives too that's one of the best ways I'll just I'll, sorry I don't know why I'm erasing this I'll leave this up here just in case any of you guys forget and then we'll move on to the next example and if any if you guys if while I'm doing this any phrasal verbs that you guys remember you have trouble with if any of them come up please let me know and I will do my best to explain them so the next one on my list is um, give up something Give up something. Okay. So, let's see. How about Ilyas? Do you know what this means, this phrasal verb? Does anything give anybody? No. Can, can you repeat that, please? Uh, I don't. I don't know, sir. You don't know. Okay, don't worry. Maybe somebody else does. Does anybody else? How about Alper? Can you hear us? Yeah. Can Do you? you hear me? Yes. Do you know what this phrasal verb means? Can you give us an example? Uh, or define. I, uh, I think is uh, give up is uh, it's mean abandon, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. We'll, we'll write that down. That's a good definition. Yeah, I can see like that. I yeah. gave up to I gave up to go to university last year. For example. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. So I'm gonna write that down. So, um, since it's past tense, we're gonna say I gave up, and then we'll just say studying at the university. At the university. So another good another good definition for this phrasal verb could be to quit. So abandon or quit. So when you give up something, you stop doing it. So, um, like Alfred said, his example was I gave up studying at the university. So you were studying at the university, and something happened. Maybe you thought it was too difficult. So then you decided to give up. So then you would say, I gave up studying at the university. Does that make sense to everybody? Is anybody confused? No? Okay. Good. So abandon quit. So I gave up studying at the university. So let's see, for the picture, what I would draw would be... Why don't you use give up smoking? Okay. Yes. We'll do that. That's a good one. I gave up smoking. So, the picture I might draw for this would be 
a person and um, we're gonna Cigarettes. show them yeah we're gonna show them throwing their cigarettes so here's we're just gonna write cigarettes or cigs and we're going to write um, well maybe 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 make them angry because they realize they hate smoking so that's a very that's a very bad hold on I'm going to fix this um, but we're going to draw him throwing his cigarettes because he decided to give up so we'll just draw an arrow so we have this guy we'll, 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 we'll pretend this is you we'll just write you and you decided to give up smoking so past tense would be I gave up smoking so when you think of give up you think of that guy throwing the cigarettes to the ground and then we'll have them land over here so this picture whenever whenever you think of the phrasal verb give up something you're gonna think of that guy giving up smoking and throwing the cigarettes and them going like I don't know 10 feet or something so that's just a good way to remember that phrasal verb okay good job guys let's move on to the next and if anything after an example if anything still is a little bit confusing please ask and I will go over another example okay the next one that I have on my list is put off so can anybody tell me what this phrasal verb means to cancel cancel yes basically so to put off is well actually it doesn't mean to cancel because cancel means to to like stop altogether put off means you're going to do it but later you're going to to postpone to yeah exactly to push push back probably is the best definition so put off just means to push back so let's say um, you have an essay due so let's say um, today's um, today's what's today Tuesday yeah today's Tuesday and my essay is due tomorrow Wednesday but and so let's say um, at five o'clock I get Monday back from class today? yeah f let's say 5 5 p.m. today and let's say that so my essay is due at 8 a.m. so at five o'clock I have done with work I'm done with classes I'm done with studying and I need to work on my essay but instead of working on my essay I put it off and I go play video games so my you can think of this think of it this way my video games are basically um, pushing back my essay so instead of working on it at 5 p.m. like I was going to now I work on it at 8 p.m. so what I did was to describe the action that I did I would say I put off my essay um, because I was playing video games does that make sense yes yeah okay good is anybody would anybody like another example no okay good um, good, good, good. My exam is uh, next month, so I put off uh, my study. Yeah, exactly. So, what you could say is, um, my exam. Let's say, um, my exam um, is next month. And so let's. So, how would you put off your exam? Like, what would you? just do to put off your exam like what's an example but of my studies mm -hmm, exactly yes yeah. so my exam is next month so since it's next month let's say it's a difficult exam you need to start studying now 
but you don't. So you might say, or actually no, let's say you do need to study. Let's say you're very studious and you want to get a good grade on this exam. So you could say exactly what you said. I put off um, my English studies. Let's say English studies. Um, to prepare for my exam. For my exam. Exactly. So instead of continuing studying English, you put off your English studies to prepare for your exam, which is coming up next month. Good job. Who was that? Who said that? Okay. Muhammad. Mohammed, good job, Mohammed. That was a great example. Okay, moving on to the next. Um, let's see. Wake up. So this is probably an easy one, but it's very, very, very common. Does anybody know what this phrasal verb means? To stop sleeping. Exactly. To stop. stop. Sleeping. sleeping and another phrasal verb, get up. So who can use that in an example? Uh, me? Yeah. For example, you have to wake up to reality? Or? That's a good that's a good example. Um I'll write that down. You have to wake up to reality. Well, this this is a good example and you can use wake up that way, but it doesn't mean to stop sleeping. When you use it this way, you have to wake up to reality. It means you have to realize um, like you have to you have to remember that you're in society and you're in reality and you're not in another world you're in our world and you have to wake up to reality and realize that you can't play video games 24 7 or something like that that yeah. that's that's a good that's a, a good example for another definition of wake up but um, one yeah. example uh, for example, my girlfriend woke me up in the middle of the night. Yeah, exactly. So my girlfriend um, so past tense woke up or woke me up um, in the middle of the night. So, the reason we use woke me up is because you were sleeping and then all of a sudden your girlfriend woke you up, as in she wanted, say, to tell you something or maybe she felt sick and she needed your help. So, she um, woke, woke you up. So... She, so, you stopped sleeping and you got up to help her because she was sick. Mm -hmm. So, we might think of that. I have another example. Okay. So, what did you say? That was a you. You have another example. Yes, <clears throat> I have to meet uh, my uh, tomorrow. I have to meet my friend at uh, nine p.m. Uh, a.m. Okay. So I have to wake up early. Okay. Um, I'm going to shorten that a little, <laughs> but it's a good example. Um, so let's say, let's say tomorrow I have to meet my friend at the airport, you said? 9 a.m. Okay. At 9 a.m. So I need to wake up, wake up early, perfect. 
So tomorrow I have to meet my friend at the airport at 9 a.m. So I need to wake up early. As in, you have to wake up before 9 a.m. You have to stop sleeping. You have to get up, get ready, drive to the airport, and meet your friend there before 9 a.m. So, good job. Who was that that gave that example? Muhammad. Muhammad. Good job, Muhammad. Okay, so I'm going to have each of you give me an example now. So we'll start from the left. Muhammad already went. So, Alper, can you give me an example of how to use wake up, the phrasal verb? Uh, the funny way, I guess. Uh, the mm -hmm. uh, wife uh, calling her husband uh, in the middle of the night. Uh, hey, come on, wake up. Uh, there is some uh, voice in the kitchen. <laughs> That's a good example. Good job. Thank you. Okay, next. Who do we have next? Uh, Belle, can you hear us? Okay, sounds like she's not there. So, Daniel, can you give us an example of how to use the phrasal verb wake up? Another one? Okay, uh, for example, uh, my mom's wake me up because I have to go to my work. Yes, that would be good, but remember to con uh, not to conjugate it, but to change it into past tense. So you would say, my mom woke me up. Mm -hmm. Or if you wanted to say in present tense, you could say, my mom wakes me up at 9 a.m. to get ready for school. So either way, but good job. Um, next, Gam I always pronounce this incorrectly, Gamzi? Gamze? It's Gamze. Gamze, okay, Gamze. Can you give us an example, please? Yeah, I hate waking up early during the week. Perfect. Great example. All right, um, Hyun? <laughs> yes, I woke up at uh, 3 a.m. this morning to finish my biology project. Good job. Perfect example. Um, Elias? Yeah, uh, I was very, very tired. And I want to wake up evening instead of afternoon. I want to I want wake, to up, wake when? up when? I want to wake up evening at evening instead of afternoon. I wake I want to wake, wake up in the evening, evening instead of the afternoon. Yeah? Is that what you said? Yeah, I want okay, I see. Uh, I was very tired. Uh, I want to wake up at evening. Okay, so yeah, so I was very tired, so you might say, I want to wake up later tomorrow morning, or I want to sleep in later. So because you're very tired, you want to sleep more, so you want to wake up later instead of earlier, right? Good job. Okay, um, Julian, can you give us an example, please? Um, no. The bark, the bark of my dog uh, wake me up. Yes, yes, but remember that it has to be woke. in past tense. Woke. Woke me, woke me up. Yes, woke exactly. Up. So the bark, my dog's bark, or the bark of my dog, woke me up. Woke me up. Okay. Yes. Good job. Okay, Mohammed already gave us a few, and then Mohanad. Yeah. Can you, you give us? Wake up to your behavior. I have to wake up to your behavior. Um, I have to wake up. Maybe change the your behavior part mm -hmm. to. Um, I have to wake up to your loud music, mm -hmm. which is a result of the behavior. So it's kind of the same thing. Good job. Okay. Good job, everybody. We'll move on to the next next example, which is. Oh, which is I actually used it. It's, it means the same thing, kind of. Um, but you can use it when you're not sleeping. The phrasal verb is get up. So, um, can anybody tell me the definition of get up? To get out of bed after sleeping. Mm -hmm, exactly, get out of bed. You also, you don't have to be in bed though. That's the thing. Can anybody give me an example which is not using the bed. So, um, an example where you might be somewhere else and you might use uh, the verb, the phrasal verb, get up. 
Does anybody know any other examples? So, for example, let's say I'm sitting down and I'm texting and it's time to go eat lunch. So my friends might say, hey, Joe, get up. We need to go. So I get up from my chair and then go eat lunch with my friends. So that's another example of how you could use get up even though you're not using, you're not talking about your bed. So let's say, um, but I mean, the, the mostly, it's mostly used, like what you said, Gamze, where you get out of bed, where, where your mom might say like, hey, get up, it's time to go to school, or hey, get up, you need to go to your job. So that's the most common. The most common is used when you're telling somebody like the command, get up, or hey, get up, we need to go, hey, get up, we need to go eat, hey, get up, we need to go do this. So um, an example you might think of is, let's say, for the picture you're going to draw, let's say you have two people, and we have one person um, yelling at the other. So we have this person, um, and we have um, this person sitting on a chair. So um, let's see. So they're sit let's say they're sitting. Um, let's say they're sitting at the desk and they're drawing something. So we have this person sitting on the chair drawing something, and this person says, "Hey, get up! We need to go." So, whenever you think of this phrasal verb, you're going to think of that person sitting down drawing and then the other person over here yelling hey get up we need to go so that way you're associating that action that image in your head with this phrasal verb and you're going to remember it better and it's also better if you come up with your own examples because if you if you just read an example on the internet then you may not memorize it as well because you didn't come up with it. So if you can try and come up with your own example, because you guys all gave me examples of wake up, if you can write that down, then associate that example with that phrasal verb, you're going to remember it better because you came up with the example. So we'll go through again just to make sure that everybody understands this phrasal verb. And I'm going to have each of you give me an example. And then I will make sure that you understand it. So starting with Alper. Yeah, do you want an example? Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you give us uh, uh, every example. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, I, I, will, I will say anything then. You just, let's say... Come on, get up your bed or... Uh, but you, or yeah. You would say, well, f for the one you just said, you would say, get up out of your bed. Yeah. 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 How about, yeah. how about, here, here. I'll give get you an example. So, let's see. Use an example for um, somebody at a pizza shop. So, they work at a pizza pizzeria, and they make pizzas, and they're sitting on the ground. Yeah. What would you say to them? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, so you would, exactly. So you would say, get up, hey, you need to start working. Get up and make some pizza. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Uh, same thing about... Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, Daniel. Okay. Uh, an example? Yes, please. It's okay uh, if you use the same one as me. Okay, for example... I had to get up early today for a meeting. Perfect. Good job. Gamze? Get up. You should go. There you go. Perfect. Um, Hyun? Or Hyun? Yeah, get up. Perfect. Get up. Why, though? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, get up. We need to go. Shopping. There you go. 
Good job. Okay. Ilyas. <laughs> when my wife screams, uh, I suddenly get up. Got up. There you go. Perfect. Past tense. I got up. Perfect. Okay, Julian. Hey, okay. Um, the bark of my dog woke, woke me up and I had to get up. And yeah, there you go. Get up and go. Perfect. Okay. Uh, Mohammed. I told my brother to uh, get up the computer to go to study. Yeah, something just attacked me. There you go. Exactly. I, I told my brother, get up. I need to study and use the computer. Good job. Okay. And then Mohanad. Uh, hey, lazy man. Uh, get up. You have a lot to do. There you go. Perfect example. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see if we can get one more example in. It's two minutes. Two minutes to go. Um, does anybody have any exam or any phrasal verbs that they want help with before we end this session? Okay. I will get one real quick then. Example. Yes. I had to get up early today for a meeting at 7 o'clock. Perfect example. Good job, Hernan. Can I, okay. can I, can I yes. use uh, put up with uh, uh, your example? Yes, put up with. Perfect. Uh, I, I want to make sure uh, if I understand. Okay. I need to say it. Uh, the uh oh. Hold on. You were muted. Okay, say it again, Alper. Can you hear me? Wait a second. There. Come on. Can you hear me right now? Yes, now we can. Okay. Uh, the waiter uh, putting up with many customers. Yes. Good example. That's right. That's, that's that's a good example, but you did not um, conjugate the verb correctly. So you would say, the waiter. Instead, you said putting up with. Yeah. But instead, you would say you want to make it. Um, it's just present, so you would say, or or past, I guess in this case, you would say the waiter put up with instead of putting up with. So you just say put up with. If you were going to say pudding, you would say, um, like. Actually, I don't even know if you say that. Let's see. I'm going to try and think of an example right now. Yeah, here you could say I am putting up with. Um, the the way the waiter putting up uh, with many customers. Yeah, but you, but you can't say the waiter putting up with because that's incorrect. So you have to say the waiter put up with a lot of customers, okay, or you could okay. say the water or the the waiter is putting up with a lot of customers. Okay, so you I need see. yes. I so see. Thank you. you're welcome. Is putting up with or just put. You could say put or puts to make it present as in a normal thing, like the waiter puts up with a lot of people on a daily basis. Okay. Before I go, does anybody else want me to clarify anything? No? Okay. All right, guys. Well, time is up. Thank you all for coming. I hope that that helped, and I hope you all remember the formula for memorizing phrasal verbs, read and understand, try and understand the definitions as best as you can, try and find examples, then draw a picture and make your own example. That's, those, that's the best formula for memorizing phrasal verbs. Okay. <sighs> okay. okay. All right. Thank well, you, thank you guys. Thank See you later. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you thank you. Have a good day. Have a good night. Have a good evening. See you guys. Yeah, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.